<laughs> we're, we're, we're moving past that one. Okay, cool. I'm saying something straight. I'm fine saying publicly. Uh, it seems like I was seeing. Okay, guys. What's up, guys? Doug Polk here. We are live, and I am bringing to you today a drawing for the $25,000 heads up event that we got coming down the pipe. I'm joined here today by Joe Ingram, uh, as well as my infamous, uh, you know, a little bit sketchy video editor. Thomas Keeling, you can't see him, I don't think, but he is here too. So welcome to the channel today, guys. Doug, listen, I, I didn't know if you knew how to do an intro again. I know you've been retired from YouTube for a bit, right? You've been trying to figure things out. You know, you've been you've been uh, celebrating that Dan Negreanu $1.2 million beatdown that you put on him earlier this year. You know, we can we kind of remember that. You, you had some speculating that you might challenge the guy again. You needed a little bit more money. I don't know what's going on. You're moving. Who knows what's happening up there with you, buddy? So we're happy to, uh, happy to be here, guys. 25K. Heads up, WPT event. And Doug, now we thought you were retired, but are you you're playing this event? So you're gonna be playing some heads up Norman Hold'em in this event as well. I just want to make sure that that we're understanding that correctly. We are understanding that correctly. I will be playing this heads up event. Uh you know, sometimes you just gotta you just gotta pull the trigger when there's value on the table. And when I heard about the people that are going to be playing this, ooh, it was hard. It was hard to say no, Joey. In fact, the only way I would have signed it faster is if I saw you on the list. But I don't think you're on here. Let me check. No, nope, nope. I mean, I've been I the last. So. One. You want to play? I'll play. Let's go. I'll play. I'll okay, take let's. let's yeah, take I'm I'm saying, let's play. I'm ready. But yeah, so wait. You're, so you're telling me when you saw that my man Steve Aoki was on the list and Jean Robert Blonde was going to be playing this event, and then you got the opportunity to possibly play in it as well too. You, you just felt like that was some value you couldn't turn down, huh? Definitely some value on the table here. But, you know, lately I, I've, I've been you know, trying to figure out what I want to do and everything. Uh, I've been in the process of uh, most likely moving down here to Austin. Uh, as you can see, I'm not staying at the, uh, the penthouse suite uh, as we lie on the floor for this stream today. But, uh, you know, I, I, think, I think I'm going to try and once in a while hop in the mix for events like this. Where You know, this is my favorite format. Heads up is my thing, and uh, this seems like it's going to be a great event, so I'm um, looking forward to it. Yeah, basically the, the, the gist of the event, guys, is going to be on the 18th of June, which is going to be coming up this week, 18th of June to the 22nd of June. It'll be a live stream on the World Poker Tours Twitch and YouTube channel, and we're going to see people playing Heads Up. I'll be doing some commentary as well on the event. I'm sure other people are going to hop in the booth over time if they're not playing. We're going to have a lot of great players down there, Tom Dwan, Phil Ivey. Doug Polk's going to be in the mix as well, too. We got a few online assassins like my man Linus Love is going to be in the mix. I know a lot of guys out there are interested in him as well, too. We got uh, even Alexandra Botez. She's a chess influencer. And, uh, yeah, she does a lot of chess content. People love her. She's going to be in the mix. So we got a nice mix of professionals. We got a nice mix of, uh, I mean, not really too many influencers. We got a few in there. And we got some businessmen in there. It's going to be a great event. It should be fun. It should be live. Hopefully it goes well. And then we're going to reveal the bracket Today, we'll talk about the matchups, talk about the players. You guys will get to see who's playing it. And that's kind of the gist of it right now. So, uh, so yeah, so, so Thomas, when do we want to reveal this bracket to the people? We want to show who's going to be playing. Yeah, I can go ahead and show you the, the player list right now. And what I've done here is I've entered them all into this list here on random.org. So we're going to randomize this list. And each time we do this, whoever's in the first position is going to be added to the bracket. Uh, and if we look through the list here right now, this is all 32 players that are confirmed. We've got Brad Owen, we've got Nick Shulman, Dan Smith, Olivier Bousquet. We've got Lucky Chewy in there, Phil Ivey and Tom Dwan. Uh, lots of familiar names and, and maybe some not so familiar names here. You can see there's a few uh, Chinese players here that qualified online. So they basically uh, won through a satellite. So those guys are going to be playing. Some of the influencers that you mentioned, uh, Gokt is a Japanese pop star. Uh, apparently very famous in Japan. He's going to be playing this as well. We're going to be joined by Alexandra Botez, a chess streamer. Uh, we're going to be joined by Shifter, who is a former League of Legends pro, and Hafu, who I believe uh, Doug is friends with. Is that right, Doug? Yeah, I've uh, met up with Hafu a few times in Las Vegas. Um, she is a, at least she used to be a Hearthstone streamer. Now I think she does more um, other, other games on Twitch, but she's uh, just a, a well-known streamer. Very, very nice person. Uh, extremely upbeat and nice uh it'll, it'll be good to see her. i haven't seen her in a few years actually or at least at least a couple of years since since covid did you ever talk poker with her 
Did you ever train her at all, or? I think I, I, I talked a little with her in the past, just some, some basic tips and stuff. But no, I haven't. There's been nothing, nothing extensive. That's for sure. Um, yeah, I always try to help out people. Like she's done a couple of poker events before, and so I think you know maybe I've, I've said a few things here and there. But no, nothing, nothing substantial. One thing that I, we should mention here is that all these influencers that will be playing uh, are all people that really love poker. We didn't just pick like just random people just because they have big audiences or lots of reach. Uh, Steve Aoki is on the list of well. He's pretty well known for uh, he lives in Las Vegas and, and plays around here. So uh, we definitely wanted to choose people that are like passionate about the game. Yeah, I mean, you saw, yeah. we saw, uh, I saw, also, I just want to mention, we saw Brad Owen on there, and all the people in the chat are fired up about Brad. Brad's going to be playing that event. Patrick Antonius, the legend's in there. I see Olivier in the chat as well. Olivier will be in the mix as well, too, doing commentary and playing in that event, too, right? R right? That's right, Thomas, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, one interesting thing that we have going on here is that some of these, some of these influencers and Twitch streamers that are joining us are going to be coached uh, by some of the guys involved in the event. So, um... So Hafu is being coached by Darren Elias. Or no, excuse me. She's being coached by Olivier Bousquet. Shifter is being coached by Darren Elias. And Alexandra is being coached by Dan Smith. And the three of them are going to be involved in a last longer as well, which we can talk about later. But uh, but yeah, and, and some of those guys that are doing coaching will also be hopping into the booth to do some commentary. Uh, Nick Schulman and Jamie Kerstetter will be on deck to, to handle the bulk of those duties, but uh, you know we might get some of the players in there, maybe Doug and uh, and some guys like that can can hop in and, and commentate on some matches and observe some things. I'm I'm hoping that I'm not in a position to be able to commentate actually, Thomas. But if uh, you know if, if the cards shake out that way, I'm I'm happy to to jump in there. Yeah, yeah. Joey Joey will be on hand too, and, and for some other cons, we're gonna do some fun stuff. Have you guys been to Mexico before? Yeah, I've been I've been a bunch of times. I, I haven't been the last few years specifically. Um, I've been to Cabo a few times in my younger and uh, wilder days. Uh, but good 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 times down there for sure. One time actually, uh, I, I remember I think it was like three or four in the morning when I was super drunk and just went out and was just trying to find whatever food was open. And there was a subway in some area, and I show up there and I run into one of my good friends, Marty Mathis. He's just at the same place. He's just like run into him at three a.m. I'm like. Small world, right? Uh, and then, uh, so I've been to Cabo a few times, but it's been it's been like six or seven or eight years since I've been down there. Usually, when I've gone to Mexico, I go down to, to Playa del Carmen the last few times. Uh, there's some really nice spots. Rosewood by Coba, just an amazing resort. If you guys ever get a chance to check it out, um, one of my favorite spots to go. But I mean, dude, it's been it's been years. I mean, I I, I drove to Texas. I, I don't know how, how long it's been since I've been on a plane. I mean, like I don't think I've been on a plane in in since pre-covid i mean my last actual plane travel was 60 months ago so uh you know it's been a little while since i've been down there but yeah going to mexico is always a good time yeah i've never been to mexico before so this will be the first time i go down Wait, there and, what uh, never been is, is that possible never been poppy i don't even listen i don't know man never <laughs> been down to mexico so this will be the first time down there for me wow that's shocking i know i know it seems like mexico would be my kind of place but never never been down there before I guess it kind of makes sense because when Black Friday happened, people had to decide to go to Canada or to Mexico, and you went to Canada. Right, so, yeah. but then I did too. So, yeah, you know, what are you gonna do? So a lot, of, a bunch of the players will be down there, but not everyone's gonna be down there. So there'll be a bunch of. I don't actually know which players are gonna go down there for sure. You never know what happens here. So we assume some people will be there. We never really know. So we're gonna be posting on updates. There's gonna be the webcams of each player while they're playing the actual event. So it'll be heads up, sit and go format. they will be best of three, I believe. And then uh, you get to see the players on the screen. There'll be commentators. You'll be able to hear them as well too. So I think it'd be a fun event. Uh, I don't really know if something like this has been tried in an online version before. So we're going to see how it goes. I think it's going to go well. And uh, Doug, Doug suspects he wins. Doug, you've been studying heads up, no one hold him. I mean, do you still remember how to play? I mean, what? You, it's a tournament, right? So, you know, do you have much heads up, sit and go experience in, in that format? Or how are you feeling about your prospects in this sort of this sort of format i think i'll be fine it, it is funny you can you can feel the drop off pretty quick where i watched a few hands from the landon versus perkins uh challenge and i can already feel myself getting a little less sharp I've not really ran any sims in the last several months but yeah i, I think with the amount of time I, i've spent 
in the six month period before that, I, I'm sure I will be fine. The short stack stuff, I might need a little bit of help on. Um, you know, I know some different formats were tossed around. Actually, Thomas, maybe you could answer this for me. Did we end up deciding on uh, the structure? Yeah. So uh, for initially, it was kicked around to perhaps have an ante in there. We're not going to be doing that. And uh, yeah, the play, play is going to start off relatively deep. Um, let me, ch don't quote me on this, but we were starting roughly around 140 big blinds deep. And uh, we're going to implement playing, ha instead of having the levels be timed, they're going to be played by number of hands. And so I believe the levels will increase, blinds will increase every seven hands. Every seven hands? Yes. Sorry, did you, did you say seven? Yes. I believe so. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> let me let, let me get back to you on this. But can, can we get can we get a confirmation on seven hands? How much of an increase are we talking here? Let me let me pull the structure. What did I up. sign myself up for, Thomas? What did I sign myself up? No, yeah, just just just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. take a little. Okay, I'm looking at the structure now, um, and I'll put okay. it on, I'll put it on the screen in a moment here. But it's uh it's it's 100k starting stack blinds of 400 800, and yeah, level times are seven hands, so it'll go from 400 800 to 500 1k, 600 1200. 800, 1600, 1K, 2K, so on and so forth. Oh, this is a four-day event, right, Thomas? It's a five-day event. Five-day event. What are we doing with the other four days? Well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Wait. <laughs> this is a bad joke. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, on a serious note, uh, the first round is going to take two days because we're going to do 16 matches per day up until like the last couple of days the finals will will just be on its own day and that should be a best of five okay all right so that might yeah that might make it a little bit a little bit is it is best of threes then earlier on yes is that correct yes they're best okay. of threes okay so it restarts back interesting i'm gonna have to run some calcs here and see like how often i think but it wouldn't surprise me if the average game lasted 50 hands yeah, well, yeah. because we're doing, hands. we're going to be, we're going to be broadcasting uh, sixteen of those games every day, and they're going to be in, um, or excuse me, eight, uh, sixteen players, eight matches per day. So it's going to be in four sets of two matches. There'll be one featured match and one secondary match, and we want to cap it such. We we try to structure it such that these th these games don't really these matches don't go longer than like two hours because we don't want these we can't have these broadcasts going like all night. You know, for well, an insane I think, of time. I think you guys did a, a great job of that for this event. I don't think that there's much <laughs> chance of that happening. So, listen, I'm with you. listen, man. Like we we ran these structures by uh, some high stakes. Uh, you know, a few heads up, sit and go specialists. Some guys in the in the high stakes cash game streets. You know, these oh, are. So, so, so let me get this straight. The guys that it, that play for very few big blinds professionally wanted extremely fast escalating blinds no, is that, no, no. I'm, just, not, I'm just i'm just double checking not just heads up set and go players doug some cash game players too and if i recall correctly i believe i did run some of this by you as well and and you said uh no strong feelings either way at least as far as antis go yeah that's just for antis but you know what thomas it's okay I, i'm fine bring it bring them all on all right you know whatever the structure is i think i can take on take on this lineup you know, I feel pretty good in a matchup against, you know, uh, I don't want to be too mean. I feel like I would do just just fine in most of these matches, you know? All right. Just fine. Well, on that note, let's go ahead and, and start doing our random drawings. Now, as I mentioned, uh, I've got random.org pulled up here, and I'm just going to take this full list of 32 players uh, I'm gonna hit the randomize button, and whoever's in the whoever's at the top of the list will be the first guy that gets added to the bracket. So I'll just go ahead and draw two right now, and this will be like the first, uh, the okay. first match. Okay. Doug Polk versus, versus Tom Dwan. Okay. The first player is Steve Aoki. So let's go back. Let me take Steve Aoki out of the list. Okay, first match is Steve Aoki versus Dan Smith. Okay. Steve Aoki versus right. Dan Smith. All right, all I'm right. I'm going to add okay. this to the bracket now. Okay. 
tough draw for Dan that first round. I like his odds there, Doug. What do you think? Um, yeah, I think Dan's probably going to the upper hand, but I'm interested to see what kind of moves Aoki has. I, I will say, of the casuals, Aoki, I, I've heard of him playing a lot of poker. Yeah. So I, I think I've not played with him, so I don't know what his abilities look like, but he should at least have some experience, which. You know, I think for, for some of the players in this pool, they're not going to have that much experience. So that, that could help Aoki. Um, but yeah, definitely definitely a, a good draw for Dan. And uh, a tough one for Aoki. I mean, Dan's got to be top 10 or 5 in this field. Really? So? Is, have you played much with Dan, yeah. Doug? Uh, I played a bit with Dan. I, yeah. I, know he, I know he plays like a lot of like, like a high stakes uh a lot of like live high stakes i don't know if he's like much of a heads up specialist so he's played a decent chunk of heads up in his life um obviously way more tournaments and, and live and stuff but I, I know he has played some heads up i'm sure he's looked at some basic stuff um and he's he's just a good player so i i would i'd be kind of surprised if he wasn't top 10 in this event just kind of looking through maybe okay. five is too much but yeah 10 10 for sure I think yeah. Time for sure. So, so we've got the list down to thirty players now. We'll we'll do a couple more drawings here, um, but okay. Top. Oh, that's a cool. We got a nice little bracket here, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got. Cool. We we have. I know you're a big bracket guy, Doug. So that's why I went ahead and, and got this nice. I love designed. brackets. We're gonna fill the names in as as we come along here, and yeah, it should be a good time. So I've taken okay. AOP and Dan Smith out of the list. Let's go ahead and randomize again. Okay, JRB is up next, and let's see uh -oh. who, who who JRB is, is going to be playing. <laughs> Doug's okay, for, for himself here. Our next match is going to be JRB versus Lin G. Okay, okay. So Lin, if you guys don't know Lin, she's a uh, younger girl. She's been playing a lot of high stakes poker for a while. Just started a vlog on YouTube as well too, and uh, you know she's a lot of fun. Plays a lot of poker. I don't know how much uh, tournament she plays. She's more of a cash game kind of player. So. But uh, yeah, going up against JRB, I'm pretty sure those two have a history as well because they play uh, in these high stakes games together. So maybe there'll be some trash talk between those two. And uh, obviously, John Robert Ballon is a legend of the game in, uh, in many ways. So it's going to be interesting to see these two battle. Doug, what do, you, what do you think about this one? I mean, JRB, uh, certainly a legend. Certainly yeah. a legend. And a legend. Uh, many men have gone broke because JRB was in a game. That's for sure. I wouldn't say that he was taking the money, <laughs> but they went broke all the same. Uh, and then, and then Lynn, I'm not, I'm not too familiar with. Uh, she, I think she played some high stakes poker, right? She was at high stakes yeah, so, poker, yeah. uh, and, okay. in, and in fact, I, I believe her and JRB uh, were tangled up in that infamous Queen Ten suited hand. Uh, there was like a big three way all in with Tom Dwan. Oh, kind, kind of remember that. It was a weird, okay. I don't recall the exact action, it was like a weird five bet back raise kind of situation with the Queen 10. Uh, didn't didn't work out. Gotcha. Okay, I, I, I think I think that, that that corner of the bracket is a really good place to be. I think all of those players can feel um, pretty happy about that draw. I mean, realistically, I think the only person that's going to be someone that is going to have real heads up experience is Dan. And then, I, and then I also think even then, Dan's not by any stretch some heads up professional so i think that's a, a really nice place to be for all of those players i think that they can feel that they got a, a reasonable draw or even a good draw joey have you been keeping up with the high quality vlogs uh from lynn lately i've been keeping up with them yeah we know you're a big fan of the high quality vlogs right oh yeah actually uh you know a few like maybe like uh eight months ago i made a post that talked about uh i was looking for someone who wanted to start doing content and because I was just seeing like, uh, who, who could I potentially help with like start a podcast or something like that? And Lynn was one of the people I talked to for a long time about maybe doing something with her. And, uh, you know, she's got real great stories. I mean, she she's got a lot of great stories. She travels a lot, plays a lot of real crazy games. So we talked about it for a while. And then she finally decided to start a vlog recently. So, yeah, I checked out her first vlog. I thought it was great. I think she just put another one up there as well, too. But yeah, I mean, I, I hope it does well. And uh, I think people are really going to like it and find it entertaining. And, you know, she lives like a uh, younger 20s and living a very high stakes life traveling all that kind of stuff like that you you sort of dream about when you're younger and you think about when you make it to high stakes so so yeah i've uh but yeah i'm, I'm definitely a supporter of lynn and i hope she does well with her content so yeah cool all right nice to see, nice to see some some women competing there for lots of money um i think that that's also good for the game to get a little diversity in there as great as it is to have um you know 
white men competing for lots of money. Sometimes we like to mix it up and have Asian men. No, I'm just kidding. It, it is nice to have like an actual like wide mix of people playing the game. So good to see. All right. Let's continue. Doug, did, you get a, did you make a tweet recently about, about women I, in poker, Doug? I, I, yeah, I, saw, really? I, saw, I saw that takeaway. Okay, we're going to end up on a tangent here, but that's okay. This is a worthwhile one. And this like insane response where I tweeted that it was... All right, so just, let's just take a step back. CNN tweets, tweets, CNN posts, top poker player, Maria... Um, I don't know her last name. And I quoted it and said top, and it showed her hand in mob with 300k winnings, Okay. And then the takeaway for some people was Doug hates women. That's what this means, right? Like, for example, I wouldn't have done the same thing if it was a guy. Like, Joey, I, I'm, I'm afraid to say it, man, but if it was your picture there, I'm not saying I wouldn't have tweeted the same thing. I wouldn't. I would I would have tweeted the exact same thing. Top, top, so, you know, top MTT Pro, yeah. Joe Ingram. Okay? Right. Yeah. And, and, and then people, there's this, this narrative that, like, oh, Doug, Doug, Doug just played, doesn't support played. women. Joey, hold on one second. I played two tournaments look this year. At my career, two look at my career. Look at my career. Joey, you don't have to get defensive here. It's okay. You're a top MVP pro. <laughs> look at my career on YouTube. Look at the videos. Over 90% of the videos I make fun of people is white men. Negranu, Luke Short. Alec Tortellini. You can, the list goes on and on. Tom Dwan, etc. Like, I have some career of bashing women for one tweet that was negative, and then the one for, uh, that I, I tweeted about Vanessa Cade. Two tweets. Doug hates women. I saw some tweet about it today. Some, like, poker rumor mill thing. Like, oh, Doug hates women. You know how Doug is. Yeah, my long, long and illustrious career of two tweets that, in my opinion, have nothing to do with the fact that they're women. Jesus Christ, man. Fucking woke, woke patrol on on parade. And then Jamie Staples, the stapler, coming out of the left field, coming out of left field saying he thinks that I only tweeted it because they were women. And how great is it that they do well because they're women or whatever his point was. And, and my, my only point is this, Joey. I think it's very belittling to women when they do something that is not that impressive, which is winning 300K in a tournament, whether you're a man or a woman, not that impressive, okay? And then we say, oh, but it was really great because they're a woman. That's fucking sexist. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to hold your hand. I don't care if you're a man or a woman or whoever. Like, I'm just going to call a spade a spade. If you win 300k in tournaments, you're not a top a top poker player. You're just simply not. And if people want to cherry pick that, however, that's fine. But here's the really hypocritical thing, Joey. The only reason that they're doing it, the only reason that anyone's saying, oh, well, technically she is a top player because she's top 1.5% of all ca It's because she is a woman. So they're being sexist, and I'm not. I'm just calling it how it is. Wow. Wow. All right. So who's next on the bracket? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. Sorry, guys. I had, that, I, I, I had to get that off my chest. All right. Ran randomizing right up, now. We, we've like got it. the list down to uh, 28 players. Next up, it's going to be <laughs> Sam Greenwood. Okay. Sam Greenwood versus Kevin Rabichow. Doug, don't you? Oh. Oh. That's that's gonna be that's gonna be a, a good one. That's a, I think I think Kevin Rabichow is quite possibly the best player in this tournament. Quite possibly. Oh my. Um, he's at least in the conversation. And then Sam Greenwood. Um, I don't I haven't seen him play, but if he's half as good as he thinks he is, he should also be quite good. <laughs> so that should be a real battle of titans there. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> what do you mean by that? You think Sam Greenwood thinks you? You think that he thinks? I'm just saying. I'm just time. saying. I, I, he's you playing know. a long time. He plays the highest stakes tournaments, right? So yeah, I think that should be a great matchup. Unfortunate for both players to draw each other in that first round. I mean, you know, you know, when you look at this field, you don't want to get Kevin Rapichow as your opponent in any scenario. So Kevin is, uh, yeah, I mean, that guy's been a, one of the top cash game players does he play a lot of tournaments doug is he a big uh a sit and go player a big tournament player too for kevin or is he just mainly a cash game guy i, I think he stuff too i think he mainly plays deeper stack cash uh but you know he's a smart guy he's very good at heads up when i when i was practicing for for the challenge versus negranu uh, i played him some he was definitely he was actually no he was the top guy i played uh in terms of just like their ability so, like, not, like, reputation, not, like, who's the biggest name, but just straight up who I thought played the best poker. Uh, it was him. He was, he was just, he was just extremely good. 
So um, he, he, he made very few mistakes. All of his pre stuff was great. His post lock stuff was great. I talked a couple hands with him afterwards. He's sharp. He's just a really, really good player. Uh, he knows the game well. So I think like that's you know just about the worst draw you can get. I don't know if there are some people in here that actually specialize in short stack, um, short stack situations. Uh, Petrangelo's probably done a good amount of work there, I have to imagine. So that might be someone you would want to avoid. Could see Dan Smith having done some short stack stuff, but at short stack, typically the edges decrease. So Maybe it's not quite as important, other than the blinds are bigger, so maybe maybe it equals out. But either way, really tough, tough draw. Uh, you had Great said, draw. Doug, that uh, this part of the bracket was the place to be, but it's looking significantly tougher now just with these last two draws. Well, this, I mean, we're getting into a different, like, sort of, you know, section of the bracket, right? So, you know, th those four spots above are only going to play one one of the spots from the four below, so... Um, it's going to be little little parts of the bracket that are, that are tougher. This this is looking like a really a really tough one. Um, if, if we get a couple more strong players drawn into this section of the bracket, uh, it's going to be a real fight for survival to kind of make it through. But then if you do make it through, I would I would typically tend to expect the people that make it out of this section of the bracket to to beat the ones above. So, um, you know, it, when you're looking at like you know who's going to make the final four, I think. You know, Greenwood, Rabishow, whoever ends up drawn in the lower match, I think that the, it's just much more likely to come from that part of the bracket. So it, it's certainly interesting, and it definitely strengthens this this part of the bracket. The next the next two spots are going to be uh, pretty interesting to see. All right, well, let's yeah, actually... Doug, uh, Olivier Bousquet, I mean, that, Olivier's been a long time heads-up sit-and-go player, and I think he's been doing that for many, many years. He used to play the 5Ks uh, at the top of the lobby on Poker Stars, and so I think he's going to have a ton of experience at this at this format, I mean, he might be the person who has the most experience in these heads-up, sit-and-go, shorter blind formats. Yeah, he, he played a lot of hypers too, right? So. Right, yeah, yeah. Let's well, see who we got next, Thomas. Who, who, who do we got in the mix right. here? Oh, yeah, Doug was saying the next two will be uh, will be interesting to see. So we've got the list of 26 players. Next up is Alexandra Botez. Okay. Okay. Versus, oh my goodness, it's Alexandra Botez versus Hafu. To, to round out the rest of the bracket. Wow, wow, that is that is a, an interesting matchup. That's that's actually really good for both of them. You know, it gives them it gives them each. It, it's going to allow someone um, a chance to to make round two with it with a pretty good frequency. They might not otherwise get the opportunity to do so. So uh, it'll be that one should be a relatively fair fight, I think. Yeah, do you know if uh, does Hafu have a lot of poker experience, Doug? I know, I know, Alex. Uh, she's pretty newer to the game. Uh, you know, I think Hafu's played a few times. I know she played some events a few years back. Um, I, I'm not too familiar with what she's done lately. I, I assume that she's you know going to be more of a recreational player, but um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, it's good for both of them, right? They, they they both drew players that are very casual. And uh, I think that that that'll be a, that'll be one of the most fun ones to watch. Probably, I think I think you're gonna have a very different vibe in that match compared to a lot of these other matches. Yeah, if you guys I think, don't, I, 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 yeah. Sorry, just just one more thing here. I think that that also kind of shows like the uh, the fun side of a tournament like this is that in the same bracket you can have Aoki Smith, J.R.B. Lin, Greenwood, Rabishow, and Botes Hafu. So basically, you have like. Famous musician versus Dan Smith, and then you have two people that play private high stakes live games, two people that are very studied online pros, two people that don't play poker, and those are gonna be your matchups in the first round. You you get the full the full range there. It's I should mention at this point now that there is going to be a last longer between uh these two players as well as Shifter, and it's for twenty K. So essentially what this could effectively be is like a 20k heads up sit and go between Botez and Hafu, assuming that the winner of this match survives longer than Shifter does. And also a 25k heads up sit and go. Yes. Well, it's a so 25k it's a 40... tournament, but... Well, sure. I, however you want to phrase it. That's a 45k match. Big swings. High stakes. Wow. So that, that match is actually... That's going to mean a lot because, yeah, if they get the three, the, three, uh, the three streamers have the last longer bet going on. Yeah, people There's... don't know about Alexandra. Alexandra is a chess player. She's uh, a great chess player. She's been playing all her life. Does a lot of content on YouTube. Does a lot of content on Twitch. She's got a very big following. Her fans love her. She streams a lot with her sister. She's always in the mix, man. I think she's awesome. And uh, and yeah, I'm excited to see her play. I don't know much about Hafu. I know Doug knows more about Hafu in terms of what she's done in the past for streaming and content. But 
seems like she's uh, you know very similar, has a great audience, uh, successful in the in the gaming world for a long time. So I'm going to be interested to see what they bring. I think it's going to be a fun vibe. Those two talking to each other, having a good time. So it's uh, yeah. That sounds cool. Let's see what we got next, Thomas. Let's see. What we I got. also, before we move on, really quick here, I think uh, just to just talk about the bracket. I think you're going to sense a real, a real pressure point on the the Greenwood Rob Chow match because I think that either of those players, if they win, is going to feel like they have a, a very good opportunity to kind of run through that bracket to the final four. Um, how many places pay, Thomas? Four places will pay. So it's, okay, yeah. so there's going to be a little bit more of a feel to that match. Like, it's not like a round one match, but this is really the kind of match you need to win to make it all the way through. So I think it'll be it'll be interesting to see to see how that one plays out. Uh, mm-hmm. Listen, guys, I don't want to get into reading a bunch of Super Chats, but I would be remiss if I ignored this one because somebody just donated $100 to Doug's channel just to say, let's spend time making poker better by creating an environment that women will want to play in. 300k means you're a pro by the general public standards and should be celebrated. So well, thank you for that donation. And it, it is actually getting pretty ironic that people are giving me money because women are awesome and I, and I will accept it. <laughs> um, but I, you know, those are two different things, right? The environment women have to play in can be horrible in poker at times. And, and I, I think we should strive to try and make that better for them. But then to celebrate, you know, 300 K over, you know, five, six years. Um, I don't really think that that's something that we should, be celebrating as a community um, and I don't think you would if it was a man that's the point I'm making but yes thank you for the hundred dollars I, I, I do appreciate that okay uh, let's move forward with the drawing and people have asked like you know what what is this that we're using this is random.org uh, and it's a site that uses atmospheric interference I believe to sort of generate random numbers and what we have here is just the remaining pool of players uh, I'm going to click the randomize button, and whoever is in the very top slot will be the next person. So I'm just doing these two at a time uh, as we add players to the bracket. So I'm going to go ahead now and randomize. Next player up is Doug Polk. All right. Playing? Here's the I'm moment. in. Here's the moment Leader. of truth. We're going to see who Doug's uh, opponent will be in the first round. We Give go him back. Give Japanese pop star. Gak. Give him that guy. Well, let's see. Tom Dwan. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm serious. Oh. Oh, man. What a year. What a year for heads up matches, huh? Yeah, yeah, puppy. Tom Dwan. Oh. Got, listen, Tom Dwan, obviously legend of the game. You know all about Tom Dwan. Recently had him on my podcast that'll be released this week, Wednesday, and I asked him about Doug Polk, and he said, I don't want to talk about that guy. So <laughs> it should be real interesting. To see you and Tom Dwan, Doug, what do you what do you what do you what do you like your chances here or what? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I I, I like my chances, um, but wow. that's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Jesus it, Christ! It'll be, you know, I, I've actually never played Tom Dwan heads up, Joey. Uh huh. I was in Vancouver in I think 2014 or 15, and I went to get dinner one once and I was debating saying to play. I was like, I'm going to go get dinner. I came back and he sat me at 200, 400 and I wasn't there. And we, he never sat me again. That was the only time and I missed it. So I've actually never gotten to play Tom Dwan heads up. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. never. You're pretty excited about it. I mean, obviously, yeah. legend in the game, right? You two getting to sit down with each other, play a little bit, meet. Have you guys met before? Have you talked before? Uh, we've talked, we've talked a few times. Yeah. I, I, I think, I think he's, well, just, I mean, the, the elephant obviously in the room is is what went down with jungle and you know how how he basically scammed jungle and the challenge um you know but over time i think he's making payments to make it right i'm not sure where it's at right now maybe they're settled i really don't know but uh you know the, the way that he that he treated jungle and that was was pretty pretty despicable and jungle was a very good friend of mine for a while so in my opinion in poker when you do something like when you say you, you're gonna pay up when you lose something and then you prolong it for 10 years uh that's not a good look and that and you know your word should be your bond so obviously I, i've given tom a lot of heat over that obviously tom has a lot of fanboys that really hate when i do that uh, there are lots of people that say you know good you know fuck jungle he that's what he gets for being such a fucking nerd like nerds get wrecked like obviously like he's a nerd like you, you should, you should tom should pay him and tom really him. Tom, really tom, i think tom, you're just jealous tom, doug aren't you just, you're just jealous i get that and i get hey you kind of look like tom Dwan. 
um, and, but let's anyway. not forget the five million dollar challenge too. I, I, which I think of is course. the real elephant in the room is the five million dollar challenge Doug issued to Tom. Uh, haven't heard back from that yet, but you know we'll see what we can do. I guess for, for now we're gonna have to settle for a twenty five k heads up MTT in the first round. Absolutely. And Thomas, you might, I mean, you know this better than anyone. When I issued that $5 million challenge, I really thought he was going to say yes. I mean, how could he not? Yeah. It just seemed so clear. Clear as day. Wow. Tom Dwan versus Doug Polk. <laughs> what a time to be alive. I know everyone thinks it's rigged, but I, I must stress again, we are using random.org. You, you're watching me click the buttons live in a web browser. I mean... It just this, this is just how it came out. Honestly, I don't know if I would want to have put Doug versus Tom in the first round. You know, I'd like to see... I, I'm sad to see one of them go so early, but it, it's it's going to have to be a reality for this tournament. I, I can't believe I just got Tom Dwan in the first round. This is truly unbelievable. Then, then again, you know, there are lots of people that I think it would be... It would be weird to get. So when you play with this few people, it's going to happen. But, but yeah, that'll be... Ooh, that's going to be a crazy one. Man, I hope I don't lose. So Lo losing that would just suck. <laughs> we still have uh, we, we have not yet drawn any of the uh, the big online guys. Uh, Limitless is in the field. Stefan is in the field. Button Clicker uh, is out there, who I believe Doug has done some work with in the past. Uh, helped him train for that big Dnex challenge. And we still have two online qualifiers uh, who who need to draw an opponent for me because well. I, I can't quite say those names. How do you say these names? Uh, you know, it's just like it's just some uh, some numbers, Joey, and some letters, and uh, you, you know, see a couple of pocket kings in there. Some uh, some Chinese uh, characters. Joey, how's your Chinese? Have you uh, can you <laughs> need a little work? You know, need a little work on that. Okay. How is your Chinese, Joey? How's the Chinese these days? I didn't make it out, you know. I, mean, I don't want to. I don't want to mispronounce the guys' names, but yeah. I don't shouldn't, know. shouldn't you be telling us what these names are, Joey? Now, now the, Thomas makes an excellent point. I think Thomas. Should, Thomas is the one that organized the list. I mean, you should be telling us what these names are. Yeah. Maybe right, someone well, out there in the chat can read the names for us and let us know how to say those names. Let's just go ahead and draw the next two players, and hopefully, it's neither of them. So I want Brad Owen versus Phil Ivy. That's what I'm looking out for. Okay. Well, actually, next up is Patrick Antonius. Okay. So uh, I'm actually real excited. He was kind of a last-minute addition to the roster, so that's cool that uh, Patrick will be joining us. I believe he's coming down to Cabo, so uh, it should be fun. And then, okay, his name came up again because I didn't take him off the list. Here we go. It'll be Patrick versus Gokt, the Japanese pop star. Uh, okay, okay. And, and J Gokt is a 47-year-old Japanese pop star. Do we know much about... Gok's experience as a poker player? Uh, my understanding is that he has uh, a relationship with WPT. I believe they may have collaborated in the past. He he is a fan of poker, uh, but mainly he's just world famous for being a, a recording artist in Japan. And uh, I, I asked a few Japanese people that I know if they've ever heard of this guy, and they seemed shocked that he's playing in this thing. So uh, he, he must be a pretty big deal over there. He kind of looks like Bon Jovi. He's got a little rock star vibe to him. This, this, I, I'm really excited. Is this guy going to be in Cabo as well, too, or is he going to play? Uh, is he not going to be in Cabo? I believe he will be playing from Japan. Okay, cool. So, yeah. So, so, are you saying, Joey, this is the this is the sexy matchup, the the, the yeah, battle I of the mean, sexy? It, it kind. Of, I saw Patrick yesterday. Well, we were at school together. He had his shirt off. I mean, the guy was going. Uh, yeah. Listen, I don't know. This is the sex appeal matchup, definitely. Gok versus. Uh, this Patrick. one's th this one's for the ladies and the guys. <laughs> <laughs> So you're obviously hoping Gok wins that one, so that way, uh, that way, if you get past Tom, you get to play Gok. I mean, you versus a Japanese pop singer, I like your odds in that one. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think that's obviously what, what I would hope for, but um, I think like I'm not, I just can't imagine Antonius has been really working on his heads up game in the last three to five years. So I I'm I'm fine fine with that either way. I, all all in all, that's a great bracket I, I, so far. I'm I'm, I'm extremely pumped. For, for my bracket it's interesting Man, that the uh, other bracket the, the other side of this bracket is going to be pretty t pretty lopsided i think the way this this is looking but we'll have to see how it shakes out yeah by the way people are asking why i'm not removing uh once a name gets drawn why i'm not removing it from the list i am doing that off screen i'm just trying to save you guys some time so you don't have to watch me like go back and erase a name and take a few seconds doing that just for expediency occasionally it will be the case uh that a player will get his name drawn twice in a row uh, because of this. 
So, you know, just ignore it if that happens. Okay. Let's, let's draw that's exactly it. what you would say if you were rigging it. Yes, yeah, so that's exactly but, if I was actually, rigging. <laughs> actually, can someone prove Thomas isn't rigging it? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, first, first, no one could prove that they weren't rigging it against Trump. And look what happened with that. It was all rigged. So now no one can prove Thomas isn't rigging it against um, Tom Dwan. Wow. That, so, that is some airtight logic, Doug. And then 7-Eleven was a part-time job. Yes, Think indeed. about that. Yep. Let that sink in. All right, we've got the list paired. I've now removed Patrick Antonius and Gok from the list. Thank you, chat, for, for helping me with that. Next up is Stefan, 11222, one of our high-stakes online elite players. Very tough draw for whoever gets Stefan. Let's uh, randomize this list again. Timothy Adams, another uh, high-stakes online legend, so... There that's a it. that's another that's another tough draw. I, I think um, Timothy Adams is someone that, when I think about his, so I'm, I'm more familiar with him than Stefan. Uh, I mean, I, I know of Stefan, but um, I know he's played Limitless a, a decent amount recently. Um, Timothy Adams is someone that I think like ten ish years ago, f- five ten years ago, he was a, one of the weaker regs at high stakes, and then I, I think he really spent some time away from the table. I'm I'm just guessing this, by the way. So if I'm wrong, you know, I'm sure he could set the record straight but spent spent some time away from the table got a lot better came back and then he went from being one of the weaker guys at high stakes to i think being one of the stronger more fundamentally sound ones so it wouldn't surprise me if he's uh one of the stronger players in the event i've not played with him for a long time i just kind of saw him come back and seem to have a better grasp of, of some some sizes and frequencies and and you know how the game works so uh, I, I think i think he's an example of he got to high stakes when you get to high stakes, sometimes you, you might get a little bit, uh, you know, behind the times. But then you can always kind of put your head back, your nose back to the grind, and, and get back there and, and, and be one of the, the stronger players. Top draw for both of them, I think. Yeah, Stefan. Uh, Stefan's been playing Limitless, as you mentioned. They had a heads-up challenge going on, so Stefan is, uh, I think, a fellow Russian. I'm not sure if he's Russian. I, I'm pretty sure he's Russian, but yeah, high stake heads-up alone player. Not sure much uh, how much he's playing tournaments or not, but I'm just imagining that guy's going to be. Uh, yeah, he's gonna be a pretty strong player. So those probably aren't guys that Doug wants to see in his bracket, but, uh, but yeah. yeah, he's got some work to do to get there anyway. Yeah, Doug's quadrant of the bracket. I mean, you know, aside from Gok, is looking uh, rather tough. I mean, your path, if you were to make it to the finals, though, could be something like going through Tom Dwan, then Patrick Antonius, then Stefan, and then whoever comes out of the other half. Thomas, you saying that is like, you know when LeBron is streaking down the court and then the point guard's in front of him and he throws the ball off the backboard and then LeBron jumps up in the air and he slams it. Like, you're basically trying to get me just to slam dunk on Tom Dwan and Patrick Antonius, and I'm simply not going to do that. I'm not going to fall for these these simple tricks to try and get me to say that it is, in fact, not a hard path. Well, yeah, I'm not going to do that. You, you I'm not going to do I, I'm not going to just say that Tom Dwan is out of touch with the game and Antonius hasn't beat anyone relevant in years. I'm not going to do it. I'm simply not going to say that. Stop trying to get me to do it. <laughs> well said. Okay. Well, we're almost done with this. Set. I hate to do it. We were just about done with this half of the bracket. I uh, just need to draw two more, and we will have the first half of the field selected. Let's go. All right. Next up on random.org is Brad Owen. Brad Owen will be facing off against Bill Ivey. Daniel DeVoris. Okay. Okay. Brad, yeah, I know Brad mainly. Uh, obviously, a lot of people know Brad from YouTube. He does a lot of vlogs. He's uh, playing cash games all over the United States. Sometimes hops in the tournament mix as well, too. I don't think I've ever seen him play any heads-up sit-and-goes before. Doug, what do you uh, what do you think about Brad Owen in uh, in this type of format? I know you've been uh, working with him a little bit. I, I've talked with it, with Brad uh, a bit. I, I think he's more of a ring player, more of a cash game player. Um, obviously, heads-up sit-and-goes, it's a bit still like cash because chip value does equate directly um but obviously this is not going to be his preferred format i i do think he's a smart guy he could put together some some reasonable strategies and come in and and give it a a pretty good shot but you know it's not going to be his his main his main game right it's going to be it's going to be a a little bit of an uphill battle for him in that regard so uh i kind of should see what what he 
brings to the table. And then Daniel is someone that uh, obviously he is a is a coach, and uh, I would assume is pretty fundamentally sound. I don't know how much heads up experience specifically that he has, so I don't want to say anything there. But I would imagine he could be a pretty good player. I think this is a tough draw for Brad. I think this is really about as 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 rough as you could really, you know. Face. I mean, sure, he might could face one a little tougher in the first round, but Daniel's going to be good. He's going to have to face someone very good in round two, uh, and then of course he's going to have to face me in round three. So uh, tough, tough path for him there for sure. I think you're right about that. I mean, Daniel plays. Uh, it seems like Daniel's always in the mix in these high stakes tournaments as well. He's making a lot of final tables and some of the big GG events. And and uh, I know that guy's a pretty hard worker. You mentioned he's coached a lot of coaching, does a lot of playing, does a lot of grinding, does a lot of studying. Always in the mix. So if Brad somehow gets through him, then he's got to get through Tom, Timothy, or Stefan. And then, uh, as you heard Doug say, already predicting his victory, he's got to get through Doug. So that is not an easy path for our man, Brad Owen. And But I know he's got a lot of fans out there that will be rooting for him. So I'm going to be curious to see uh, see what he's got. And as you said, right, see what kind of strategy he comes out with. It's a higher variant style. Anyone's got a shot to win. And this isn't like a 20,000 heads up or 20,000 hand heads up Nolan home tournament where... You know, the better player is, all, is all, most likely always going to win in that format. This is something where there's a lot more variance. And uh, even if you are a weaker player, you could still have a decent chance to be able to win. Even if it is a best of three or best of five, it doesn't mean that you're totally ruled out. And you have no chance. So you don't want to go in there thinking, oh, you know, I got no chance to win this. And and uh, hopefully we'll see Brad come in there confident and uh, and put up a good fight. Well, just to push back on that, there actually is a, a, a you know, it, you do get seven hands in per blind level. So there will be a lot of play, Joey. And, and I think, like, you don't want to oversell the luck element here. Uh, I think the best player is going to win pretty consistently. So it's pre it, it's kind of yeah, similar okay. to, like, let's just say you wanted to do a 25,000 hand challenge. Um, it's it's pretty pretty close to that. It's closer <laughs> than it is different. Yeah, I see exactly what you're saying, Doug. And, and uh, you know, now that you make that really great point, how... I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk that back a little bit and uh, agree with you. So no problem. Man. We got, our, we no got problem. our left hand side here, Doug. Of the bracket looks pretty uh, nice mix yeah. of players. I kind of like this, right? I, I like what uh, I like what Thomas was saying earlier. Like what you were saying earlier. We got a musician in there. We got another Japanese pop star. We got two legends of the poker game. We got debatably one of the top heads of Nolan home players of all time. We got some online crushers as well. We got uh, the king of YouTube vlogging, Brad Owen, in the mix as well. So we got a we got a real nice mix in that left hand side bracket. Can you just show me the remaining players, Thomas, before you draw them? I just want to take a quick peek, get get the little little feel for, for who's still left in the in the mix. Yeah, so the sixteen remaining players are Nick Shulman, Olivier Bousquet, Lucky Chewy, Phil Ivy, Nikki P, Darren Elias, Stephen Chidwick, Shifter, our uh, influencer, Twitch streamer, Button Clicker, Anthony Zinno, uh, Linus Love, two of our Chinese qualifiers, Jeez. Limitless. Manig, Lozer, and Chris Kruk. Did you say Limitless twice, or am I... No. I said Linus, okay. and then Limitless. Oh, okay, sorry. Why, why did I think yeah, that? Yeah, same um, thing. Same thing, really. So, it, so like, these these uh, Chinese qualifiers are, are kind of wild cards, right? We really don't know what we're getting there. Like, are those guys going to be really good? Are they going to be kind of good? Are they going to be just wrecked? We don't know what we're getting. I'm just going to... Let's just assume that they're decent. I think that it's pretty safe to say that that side of the brag is going to be substantially tougher. Um, you got a lot of really good players in there, so I think uh, I think we're going to see some um, some some star-studded matches in terms of poker ability on the right side. Although I do think on the left side, I think you're going to get more of the like LOL matches you're going to want to watch, and some more maybe the name power. Uh, of course, you're also going to still have Phil Ivy on the right, but uh, I would expect there to be some really tough matchups on the right side of this bracket. Indeed. Indeed. And let's go back talking about uh, the the seven hand structure, by the way, because we can we can talk about, you know, the number of hands in between blind levels. But Doug, would you agree or disagree that for a heads up format that it's better to go by number of hands than by time where you can have stalling and, and things of that nature? Yeah, that, that makes some sense. Uh, I, I think I can get behind that. Uh, it's a little weird to not... Oh, I guess the, the reason that's odd is so that it alternates when the binds increase. Yeah, I think that that seems okay. Just seven hands is is just so little. Like it can go fold, raise, fold, raise, three bet, fold, fold, raise, call, one flop, raise, fold, fold, and then you're into the next blind level. Like that, that's what, that's gonna happen in some blind levels, you know. So, um, I guess like I just think like it's it's it, it's probably fine. 
for for the time constraints, I think it's, I think it's fine. Okay. Okay, that's certainly something we can uh, we can get into more as the event approaches. I don't know if that's I, in stone at the moment. Right. It might well, be. I, I, I'm just saying that, you know, it, it doesn't surprise me if some heads of said and go players helped, helped this structure. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I hear you loud and clear. All right, let's draw the next two players. We have the second half of the bracket to get to. 16 players remain to be drawn. First up is Linus Loliger. Mm hmm who will be facing Olivier Bousquet. Oh, jeez. Oh, that is a that is a rough one for for Olivier there. Not not your not your favorite first round matchup. And and also you know Olivier might might be be surprisingly good here, right? The guy's had a career in heads up set and goes. Obviously knows the format very well. I imagine is still fairly actively learning and studying the game. Uh, it wouldn't be. It, it would not surprise me if Olivier was low key one of the better players in this event. It just kind of doesn't feel like it because you don't see his name around so much nowadays. But that could be a uh, a really tough matchup. Yeah, if you guys don't know Olivier, Olivier's been around playing the high stakes for a long time. He's been uh, active in commentary over time. I'm pretty sure he is still actively playing as well. Did the podcast he was doing, and uh, yeah, it still seems like the guy. Is enjoying poker i'm sure he's still studying poker i'm sure he's still working at his game so he's in the chat he said that he did push for a longer deeper structure so so yeah he was one of the guys pushing for deeper structure and then if you guys don't know linus love linus love uh, i don't know where he currently stands in the uh hierarchy in terms of the online cash game world but for a long time he was one of the top players we saw him at the triton poker playing some cash games over periods of time he played some of the tournaments as well too before coronavirus so yeah, it's going to be exciting to see him play. And, uh, yeah, definitely a tough matchup for both of those guys. And, and, you know, you probably want to get the Japanese pop star first round. You probably don't want to get, uh, you know, one of the top players in this mix. So, so yeah, we're going to be interested to see that matchup here. I see a few questions in chat about Landon. Uh, because we did film some promotional material for the Sets Up event. We ran some ads and things of that nature. And we got some cool stylistic B-roll of guys throwing chips and cards and stuff. And, uh, and Landon was in some of that. Uh, but Landon uh, had to drop out, and yeah, unfortunately, we're not going to have Landon in this one. Hopefully, we get him in the next one, though. Kid's got a lot of potential. He's really out there battling Bill Perkins and, and doing lots of other uh, interesting things. Let's... All right, I still can't, I can't get over the fact that I'm playing Tom Dwan in the first round here. <laughs> what, a, what a bombshell of a draw. Uh, among a few, really, like... Uh, in the in the first half of, of the bracket, pretty unreal. It it it's, yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. It, it reminds me a little bit of when we did we played the super high roller bowl a few years back, uh, and I drew Negrano to my right, and yeah. Uh, yeah. And we immediately it, it, ran it, to get shirts printed. Exactly. We do, we we have to get these in time. <laughs> Oh, those are good times. Uh, I ran to the printer. I got that shirt whipped around in less than 24 hours. I ran yeah. to the Poker Go Studios. I handed off the shirt like 10 minutes before the event started. It was, you know, it was touch and go there for a while, Doug, but we got it done. And, and that's the kind of commitment to the memes that at Poker uh, Poker Studios, we, we've we really tried to, to strive for, Thomas. And uh, I just want to say wouldn't have been the same without you there by my side all those years. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Did good work. Yeah. Did I, good work. I don't know if you've talked about this much publicly, Doug, but I understand that you might be interested in uh, dipping your toe back into the content streets in the near future. Once I'm not living on the floor, I'm thinking maybe I get into some video content. But uh, for now, I just do uh, WPT heads-up tournament drawings. Excellent. Perfect. All right. Let's see who's up next. Okay, Nick Shulman is up mm. next. Let's see who Nick's draw will be. Chris Kruk. Mm. Nick Shulman versus Chris Kruk is our next matchup. Yeah, it's another tough one. Nick Shulman, uh, you know, one of the, the legendary poker commentator. I think people know him for, uh, you know, been a long time high stakes player. Played a lot of Bobby's Room. Plays uh, more live poker than online, but he started playing a lot more online poker as well, too, in recent years. Versus Chris Kruk. I mean, Chris Kruk, uh, I don't know if people know him as much in terms of versus Nick Shulman, but Chris is one of the top online poker players, longtime high-stakes cash game player, 
played a lot of live poker, played a lot of online poker as well, does a lot of coaching, and uh, he's definitely a very, very tough player. So that is, once again, uh, a tough matchup. And uh, maybe we'll hear Nick do some commentary of his own when he's playing this match. And do you, do you think a lot of these guys are going to be talking, Doug? Like a lot of these, uh, you know, you think Chris Kruk and Nick, you think they're going to be jawing back and forth a little bit? Or, or do you think it's going to be more of a, a quiet type of uh, interaction between between a lot of these online guys? Uh Chris Kruk is one of the few guys I know I know very little about, so I just don't feel qualified to, to have an opinion. And with how many opinions I feel qualified to have, that really means something. Uh, Nick Schulman. Nick is one of, if not the absolute best color commentary guys in the game. I don't know about you, Joey, but when I'm listening to Nick Schulman talk about hands, it's it's just he just has this passion and fascination about the hand that's just amazing. I, I just love I love the way that he thinks about poker and talks about poker. Now, there's a difference, of course, between how you think and talk about poker and how you actually play in real time. I've not seen Nick play all too much. My understanding is he's at least pretty good, uh, but I'm not sure exactly where he stands in keeping up with all of the latest developments in the game and whatnot. So I think that that match stands to be a pretty competitive one uh, assuming that chris is uh one of the better higher stakes guys and that nick actually you know knows the heads up format pretty well and, and i think it's safe to say that he does i listened to, to, to some of the work that he did during the challenge i played for daniel where he was doing some commentary he had a lot of cool things to say he even correctly called out some hands in some spots that i actually had there was one where i was considering an ace i call in a four bit pot and Nick was saying, it really makes sense to call with hands like Ace-Jack of Hearts here. And I called and had Ace-Jack of Hearts. He almost called the exact combo, I think, in that one. So I've seen his thought process at work. I know he's a smart guy. He's got a good uh, good head in his shoulders to to think about the game correctly. So I think, I think that that should be a, a fairly a tough matchup. And really, this is what I'm saying as we sort of see the side of the bracket come together. When you have a lot of good players and there aren't a lot of players left, well, they kind of have to go somewhere, and I think that this this bracket is, is going to be a tough one. Um, maybe Linus wouldn't think so, but I think overall it's a, it's a tough side of the bracket. Yeah, Chris in the chat said Nick and I are going to have some good banter. It's going to be like in Bobby's room. There's no escaping that room once you get in there. So, hey, maybe we are going to see the boys do a little back and forth here. It would be nice to see. Yeah, that should be fun. Mm -hmm. It's actually – it is interesting to see people that already have some – sort of uh, rapport with each other play because then there's sort of a, a, a comfort comfortability that if that's a word that they have that you, you get to kind of see it at, at play. It's going to be webcams, I believe, webcams and mics. Yes. So, yeah, okay. So that should be fun to see. And then, of course, you also get to have a healthy amount of awkwardness in some matches, which, you know, I'm not saying that I'm going to be involved in some of those, but it's certainly possible. Yeah, you and Tom Dwan talking to each other. What are you guys going to talk it about? It was hypothetical, Joey. It, I wasn't yeah, saying okay. it was me. It was more of a hypothetical possibility. Okay. 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 Wow. Let's see what we got next, Thomas. I'm, waiting, I'm still waiting for Phil Ivy to get drawn here. What a sick draw it, it's been so far. Just, just unbelievable. Okay. Next up, we've got our first qualifier is up next. Okay, go ahead. And... Say that name, Thomas. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's it's nine nine nine, Joey, and, and and some Chinese characters. And... I think, I think Thomas that it was very unprofessional of you to not know what those Chinese syllables are, and uh, you know I'm not saying that it hurt the quality of the stream, but I'm certainly not saying that it it, it didn't. Oh, thanks, buddy. Uh, <laughs> Mister <laughs> Mister or Mrs. or he or she will be uh, facing off against button clicker. So, we have qualifier Thomas, one versus button I, clicker. I, I hate having to say this, but the he or she thing is is a pretty played out pronoun uh, combo, and there's actually more that you know it could have been they, and okay. I, and I think I think that you know it just wasn't very 2021 of you to say that, and and I'm not saying that it is a big deal, but I'm also not saying it isn't. Very fair. So button clicker versus uh, one of our online qualifiers. What, what what really what what can you say? Well, Doug, tell us. A lot of people might not be that familiar with with Button Clicker. Really, I had never heard of him until I knew that he was working with you uh, on the D next challenge. 
Yeah, so Clicker Clicker is a he's as close to a a prodigy as I would really say we have in poker these days. The the guy is not even 21 years old. He uh, is an up and comer in the poker world. He is incredibly sharp. He's already very successful, has made millions of dollars playing the game, and he he just understands the game at a level that's extremely high. Uh, but he also puts in a lot of volume and, and works really hard now. I would say, so I worked with him and, and also uh, another guy uh, named Fabian or Frab uh, for my, my, my training for the challenge. I would say he's a little bit less intellectual than Frab is, but he's got that passion to play and, and the heart of a, of a warrior. And he's good at hitting very accurate frequencies. He's just really good. He's one of the best players I've ever seen, if not the best player I've ever seen. So I would definitely take him. In. Ever seen? I mean, he's up there. I don't know who's who's. I don't know. You know, this this, I, this brings I, up I, a great point, Joey. Doug, when are the power rankings coming back? Because clearly, when are the power rankings? I, I actually, you know what, Thomas? I thought about the power rankings the other day, and the thing is, I didn't want it. I didn't want to put myself on them without being ready to back it up, right? So let's say I put myself at a number, and so I'm just, hey, Doug. I'll fuck you up. And I just say, oh, I meant in theory. Mm. It's just a bitch-ass move. Well, you can always so, recuse yourself from the list. Rec I recuse myself. No, yes, that's, that's of course, an option. Yeah. Yeah. yeah power yeah. rankings. We'll mold over. Okay. Yeah, top five power rankings, excluding myself, of course. Also, can I just point this out? No one runs better than, than uh, Henry or Button Clicker does, and he draws an online qualifier in the first round. I'm just saying, it's. Yeah. A, I'm not saying it's a nice life. But I'm also not saying it isn't a nice life. Well, I mean, it's hard it's, it's hard to say, Doug. I, and I'm told, by the way, that uh, the Chinese characters mean Caterpillar, guys. So, okay. So okay. It, it's Caterpillar 999. And really, who's to say how tough this opponent is, Doug? I mean, it's being very presumptuous of you to just assume he's going to be an easy out for button clicker to just advance fair. to the next round. Totally fair. Do we know? What, what did he win to qualify? Uh, yeah, so there were, uh, on the Poker King app, there were... Uh, satellites to uh, I believe it was a steps tournament uh, to get into this thing so two lucky players got 25k seats to play against the likes of of Gokt and and you know in button clicker so the, the online qualifiers are gonna they're, they're gonna at least know what they're doing right I mean they had to get through the step process they're gonna have some idea of what they're doing I mean so. Joey it's not easy to win a tournament and not just anyone can do it that's I mean to win multiple step tournaments right <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. <laughs> I mean, all right, we're, we've we officially managed to get Thomas angry enough to start trolling. So th this is good. <laughs> we're, we're headed in the right direction. Uh, all right. So uh, the list of remaining players uh, has gotten quite shallow, and we're we're get, we're getting to the near the finish line. Let's see who's up next. All right, limitless. Uh, is our next player, and he will be up against Nick Petrangelo. Limitless versus Petrangelo. They just don't get any easier. Oof. Oof, man. Oof. Now, if I recall correctly, Doug, uh, I believe you have watched a recent Heads Up match that Limitless participated in, and at one point you just threw off your headset and couldn't take it anymore. I don't know if that will be the case this time. All right, so... Here's what here's what I want, okay? And this is gonna be on a a a first come, first serve basis for people that are reputable. I want I want to bet ten K on my man on my man Nikki P straight up to advance in this tournament. Uh just just tweet at me the first legit person that I see. You can have 10k on limitless. It's even money. There's no poker shares lines up. I just wanna get this line in up up quickly first. Um Actually, maybe I should wait because I get a better odds. Because uh, I'll just take it even money. Why not? All right. You want to at Doug Polk Vids looking for 10K on Nikki P. Just a little sweat, a little sweat action. Um, I'll be monitoring Twitter. So at Doug Polk Vids. Let's see who we who wants some action. Well, um, in there. Um, yeah, no, but uh, seriously, though, seriously, though, all, all jokes aside. These are clearly two of the strongest players in the field. Nick Petrangelo is extremely good. He's going to know his short stack stuff extremely well. Obviously, I'm biased. He does work for, work with upswing. 
and uh, his tournament course is phenomenal. This guy knows his stuff. I'm a big believer in Nikki P. And then L Limitless, of course, you know, all jokes I've made about Limitless, I know we've trolled back and forth. He has played a ton of high stakes heads up. He will be a good player. So, uh, tough, tough match either way. I do like my boy Nikki P in that matchup, though. So, here we go. Okay. People, people, uh, Nikki Angelo, he's a long, very, very long time uh, high stakes player, plays high stakes tournaments now, plays high stakes cash games right now. As Doug said, he did a great course for upswing poker as well, too. Known for his talent of drinking an immense amount of beer with some of his beer review videos as well, too. And the guy's definitely in the street. Amazing. He's working the, at his game. What you got? Those, those beer review videos are just, are just absolutely amazing. I, I just, I can't. The Nikki P beer review videos. Right? I know, That's yeah. What right, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. I don't even want to try to... I tried to explain how those were funny to someone the other day, and I realized that it's just not the kind of thing you can explain. It's just something you have to enjoy on your own. You gotta watch live. And Limitless, as, uh, as Thomas was saying, Limitless had a, a heads-up match with Fader Holes that I had to commentary on after Doug played Daniel, and uh, Doug was streaming it as well, too, and then Doug... Stopped the stream midway, said it was rigged, and I don't know what the hell was going on with that. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, but Limitless won't be, he's not going to be on location. So we're not going to get to see Limitless and Doug uh, maybe talk more about that challenge. So, but yeah, that match, very tough match. And uh, Doug's issued the challenge, $10,000 offer. If you want to bet on Limitless, if somebody wants to take him up on that offer, hit him up on Twitter and uh, help Doug out a little bit, give him some action. So, how are you betting bigger on this? Hold on, guys, in a sec. Sure. Trying, to make, try, trying to make some money on the side. Uh-oh. He's making a tweet right now. I was going to go 10K, but you know what? A little 20K never, oh. never hurt anybody. Okay. Well, while Doug's doing that, we can go ahead and uh, continue drawing the bracket for this tournament. The The hustle never ends for Doug. Endless quest to accumulate more dollars. And, uh, yeah, we've only got eight players left, so let's take a look here. Next up is Shifter. Shifter is a... Uh, Former League of Legends pro, now a full-time Twitch streamer, uh, content producer. He's one of our influencers. He's in that last longer with Alexander Botez and Hafu. And uh, let's see who his opponent will be in the first round. Anthony Zinno. Okay. We have Shifter versus Anthony Zinno up next. Yeah, Anthony Zeno is uh, mainly a tournament player, plays PLO, plays Hold'em, plays a lot of games. Uh, I think he's a trader as well, too, and uh, maybe was, used to be a lawyer or something like that as well. Can't remember his exact background right now, but yeah, he's been around poker a very long time. Plays a lot of poker as well. I don't know how much heads up sit and goes he plays, but uh, I know he's a sharp guy, so very. Uh, I'm just excited to see him again. I haven't seen him in a while. And then Shifter, I don't know anything about Shifter. I know that, uh, once again, another gamer, another streamer, has a great audience, seems to have a lot of great fans. So, Doug, do you know m much about him, or do you know anything about his background or anything like that? I, I really don't, unfortunately. I can't can't give much of a of a rundown on uh, for him. Do you know anything about Anthony uh, Anthony Zeno? Uh, I mean, I've talked with Anthony a little bit. I know he's played in a bunch of WBT stuff, so it makes sense to see him here. Um, he had some uh, pretty good finishes. I think he won a couple events a few years back. Uh, but I can't recall stuff he's done more recently. I do think he's a bit more of a tournament player. I'm not sure if this is really going to be his uh, sort of you know strength. Uh, I know he's. I think he's played some some of the heads up events at the WSOP before. But uh, I don't really have. This is a bit of a mystery match to me, Joey. I don't really know too much about either player, uh, most specifically in this format. And uh, I think it's it's probably safe to say this will be um, one of the uh, you know maybe less competitive matches uh in the in the tournament in terms of maybe how fierce the players are in this format but um obviously everyone's trying to win and uh you know maybe we'll be surprised maybe maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised with with the play from some of these guys that we're just really not familiar with yeah, anthony yeah, has uh some wpt titles to his name too if i'm not mistaken yeah, so people ask about who chose the players uh you know a lot of shows in terms of who chose the players thomas was a big part of choosing the players and if you guys are asking why are we doing the stream it's because uh this is a collaboration event between wpt and poker king and thomas is uh thomas what would you say your, your role is for for that for that job with poker king i'm creative director at poker king so i'm just overseeing you know content and events like this god the top right bracket is brutal brutal yeah. 
that's 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 a tough one. I mean, you look at the I top mean, left, I mean, right, just I mean, yeah. Like the like what you're hoping for in that bracket is this random guy we don't know isn't good, because if he's good, that's a wrap. Murderer's row. Yeah. So there was. Just the whole... Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say there was some discussion as to like how do we how do we fill this bracket out? Do we do seating? Do we you know um. How do we how do we choose? And in the end, we just decided that just purely randomizing is the only real fair way to do it. But you you do that, you know, going into it that yeah, sometimes the the field can be uneven. You'll have you'll have certain sections of the bracket that are just going to be brutal. Sometimes it's it's actually the least likely outcome that it'll be like fairly evenly distributed in terms of skill. Well. That that's certainly true, and I kind of thought after seeing the fir- way the first quarter of the bracket was drawn that we would we would maybe look at something like this. But I mean, just just look at this, <laughs> just look at this lineup. I mean, the, it's just there's no. I, I don't know. I don't know Chris's heads up game, or I don't know much about Chris's game, period. But I mean, the the rest of that is just it's it's just sick. I mean, five of the top ten names in here, right? Maybe maybe five of the top eight are all in one bracket i mean i i would i think I, you'd have to put linus in there you have to put clicker in there um in, in my opinion limitless and petrangelo are both going to be top 10 in this event um yeah, shulman's at least good chris plays high stakes I've, people seem to have positive things to say maybe maybe he's pretty good as well and then um you know bousquet of course he's got a career playing as sitting goes you know, and he might not be in the top half of this bracket. <laughs> like it's, I, I don't know. I mean, this is this is just an absolute murderer's row. Whoever comes out of this bracket is going to really earn. Is going to really have to earn their their way there. So, um, yeah, that's just it's going to be a tough one, guys. That's just not the area you want it to be. Yeah, until they make it to the final against JRB, and and just get wrecked. Guys, what's the last time we saw something like this? Like a, a heads up tournament, like a heads up bracket style. I feel like I. I I can't remember the last time we've really seen a, an event like this before. Like, I mean, I know we've seen them before, but it doesn't seem like a lot. Is it, Doug, do you remember a time like this? Has there ever been a, like, I um, mean, I know Poker Stars has the W Coops and the Scoops and stuff like that, but has there ever been, like, a separate sort of event, like, structured or framed like this? Not exactly like this. Obviously, WS, WSOP has a heads up event where they do the big drawing reveal. Yeah. And there's a bracket online stuff. So that's kind of the most close to this. And then W Coops have a heads up event, but again, that's drawing at the time of I, I guess I guess I had phrases like this, Joey. I've not seen a heads up event where they draw it this far out, right? It's a few days out. So and so you can get some hype going. I've not seen that before. And and I actually I actually really like it the way they're doing this. And and, and Thomas, just to push back on a on a comment that you made because you're talking about how we should set up the bracket. And while I agree with you, when you do it truly random, you're more, you're, it's impossible to have this happen if you set it up yourselves. But um, I think one of the great things about doing it truly random is that stuff like this does happen. And I think that that's fun. And it doesn't really change your EV. Let's just, let's, let's just say like, you know, oh, well, maybe it does change the player's EV. So that's not actually, I shouldn't say that. But Allowing there to be, oh, someone has the easy bracket, someone has the hard bracket, someone has to play two really tough players in a row, someone gets to play the, some casual players in a row. Um, I think that the storylines that develop from that kind of naturally are so much fun to watch and appreciate that I think it's much better like this. Now, I'm sure that there are maybe eight people that would disagree. <laughs> <laughs> um but I, I think like just just getting to allow that to sort of happen naturally, I think. Uh, yeah. I think it's fun. It's at least fun, right? If, if, if it's you're at least hand, fun. If you're hand picking the brackets, for example, there are choices here that you would just never make. Like 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 the two of the influencers that are in a last longer, I would not have pitted them against each other in the first round. I, I obviously would have taken some of these killers in the top right of the bracket and spread things around a little more. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, it it, it is just kind of like a, uh, crazy things can happen, and that does kind of make things more fun than say uh, the predictable formats and like say I don't know the NBA playoffs where you've just got, like the one seed versus the eight seed uh, every year. Right, that, that's true. But the thing about that is different is in, in that there's a regular season, right? This is just a drawing, so or this is just an event. So I, I think I think this was the only way to do it. And and frankly, especially seeing my name in the bottom left, I think this was a great way to do it. I think we should really encourage this kind of format. Well said. 
Okay, we have six players left to draw. Oh, wait, Phil Ivy here, Thomas. Who's Phil? Who can Phil Ivy play? I hope I hope it's not Phil Ivy versus the online qualifier. Okay. I hope we get to see Phil Ivy versus uh, versus somebody that we know. Well, but who do you want to see, Joey? Who who would you like to see Phil Ivy up against uh, in this match? Well, I would like to see Phil Ivy against. Uh, I, I mean, okay, if I had to pick a dream matchup for Doug Polk first round, I would have gone Tom Dwan, obviously. But the second option would have been Phil Ivey. I would have liked to see those two play. And, uh, you know, they got that infamous hand from, uh, what is it, Aussie Millions cash game. And I don't know if that ended, ended quite nicely for Doug Polk. Yeah, I was going to say, there actually is a little bit of history with Doug and Phil there, as opposed yeah, to Tom, who they've show. never played. Uh, I'll go Phil Ivey and, uh, wow, yeah, we got a bunch of Darren uh, Dawson. Ta 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 Tom Dwan was actually in that game that I was in with Phil, by the way. He, they were both there. Oh, you're talking about the recent high-stakes poker. Yeah, you were seated right next to him, right? Oh, I was talking about the one Aussie both times. Oh, okay. I didn't know he was there at, Aussie, at the Aussie Millions cash game. Because I just remember seeing those uh, big hands against Phil Ivey. Yeah, I, I, I don't really... I, I've not really played... I've, I've played very little with either of them, I can't say. Yeah, to, to the viewers oh, at home, yeah. you might remember that Doug was giving off lots of physical tells when he was up against Phil. And, you know, if you know what it is, don't say it in the chat. But if you saw it, but it's there. It, it's there, but just don't – I'm not going to say what it is. But Doug was giving off lots of physical tells that day when he was losing right. Phil Ivey. And, and, and if you can, you know, keep it to yourself. Yeah. Um, something, something, meme memes. God, need to make some more. We need new memes, Thomas. All right, new all fresh. Right. They're getting a little stale. That's true. Hot memes. Hey man, yeah, just, hot. we got to get back in the game. Is how we is how we make that happen. All right. Well, we're gonna exactly. see. We'll, we'll see what's. Uh, yeah, six players left. Let's see. Let's see next. Okay. Well, it is Phil Ivy. Okay. Okay. It'll be okay. Phil Ivy up against Lucky Chewy Manig Lozer. Okay. Phil Ivy versus Manic Loser. How much do we know about uh, about this player? Uh, Manic, thirty-two years old from Germany. Uh, I don't know a ton about him in terms of his, uh, you know, his poker experience. I did see him playing live poker recently and talk with him for a little bit when I saw him. Uh, but I think he's more of an online player. Yeah, I, I don't know a ton about his um, his past history. Maybe do you know anything about his uh, his history, Doug? You at know, all? I I seem to remember, and I, I don't. I don't want to confuse people because I, I seem to do that all the time. But I kind of remember this guy challenging me to heads up after winning an event. Was it this guy? I think, I think no, it was. No, no, man, no, no, this was not Manning. That was a different guy. That guy that said, Doug Polk, I challenged that. That's a different guy. That guy, okay. well, I don't think that guy was a professional. Manning's been a professional uh, for a very long time. Okay. So, and then Phil Ivey. Okay. If, you, if you guys don't know Phil Ivey, uh, I don't know what you're doing here right now, but Phil Ivey, one of the legends of the game, debatably one of the greatest players of all time. Just did a podcast with him uh, recently that was posted on my YouTube channel that people are seem to be really, really enjoying as well. So, gonna be excited to see him in the mix and uh, and yeah, I know he's excited to play more poker as well. So this will be the first time we get to see him. I didn't we see him on high stakes poker, but this will be another time we get to see him play. So I know the fans will be pretty excited about that. Yeah, definitely check him out on Joey's channel at Joey Ingram One. Recent podcast uh, was great. Great job with that, Joey. By the way, really Thank great you. job. How was that uh, sitting down with Phil? for a good uh, hour some people said i look nervous when i was sitting down with phil ivy and uh for the first three minutes i was kind of un i was surreal i was like unbelievable because i've been doing podcasts for a long time and you obviously you, you know you want to get the best players top players greatest players of all time the legends of your game and i've never met phil ivy before until that day so sitting down next to him uh, looking in his eyes the ivy stare the fucking lights are on me the camera's there i know whatever happens is going to be forever on the internet so it was a little nerve-wracking yeah for the first three minutes but we got loose i got into it but it's always weird you know me and doug know each other a long time we've talked for uh many 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 hours right so we got a great rapport we know each other well we know how to fuck with each other uh we know how to joke around right well phil ivy i don't know that guy at all so you know it's, it isn't that same comfortability you have with you know with the conversation where you know somebody and then it's going to be recorded and then it's the third interview he's done in like 10 years so it was a little nerve-wracking to feel that pressure on me because i wanted to cover so many topics but I, uh, I think I, I think he did a good job, and uh, once I got past the intro, I stumbled a bit. But besides that, it, it, it was it was fun, man. I had a great time with that one. Would you say you had uh, some butterflies in your stomach there, Joey? <laughs> it was more like, what is going on? I'm like looking around, like how the fuck is this? I, it was just like it was just surreal. I, I was pretty shocked. I, it, so. Yeah, no, I, I understand. I, I, I actually, there is something. There's certain. There's some aura that some players have. You know what I'm saying? Where they just have this aura of like sort of mystery, and Phil Ivy is probably the the king of that. Yeah. 
Like it's so when, when you look at the live, you're like, man, I wonder what that guy's doing, and he, he usually just says nothing. It's just this. He just takes it in. So um, it, it, it it's kind of like knocking down a. You, I mean, you probably got to a point where you thought, I'm never gonna get to do a podcast with Phil Ivy, right? I assume. I assume yeah, you thought that, right? So it's it's just probably not gonna happen. I was thinking it happen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you ask like who should I have next on my podcast? People say Phil Ivey and Tom Dwyer, and you're like, dude, shut up! Like, no, really, yeah. be serious for a minute here. Yeah, 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 definitely. I'm like, all right, guys, come on, let's stop wasting my time and your time by saying that in the chat. Yeah, but so then to have it happen now, it's like, oh well, maybe I get Elon Musk on next. I don't know. You never know what's going on out there. So yeah, I mean, you're still gonna have three former or current NBA players on the pod, right? Uh... Wait, we doubled. Hold on, <laughs> we doubled down on that. Thank you, Thomas. Yes. Joey, uh, you owe me some money. <laughs> you oh owe me God. some money. Yes. Man. Oh, my Thank God. Thank you. Fuck me. 4K. Oh. What was I supposed to do? Three NBA players? You bet me 2K and you had one year and we did it on your pod. 2K, yeah. you had a year yeah. to get two, three NBA players. On. Or it could have been one really big one. We agreed on that, too. Like if you got, if, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you got Shaq or Barkley, I'd be like, just take my money. Yeah. And then you said, and then you lost, and we did another pot. And you said, well, look, hold on, let me double down. And you wanted to go double or nothing. I said, okay, you got another year. And I forgot about that. Stupid fucking bet. I forgot all about this fucking bet. God damn it. <laughs> Do you yeah. want to go double or nothing again? <laughs> well, give me a few days to decide, okay? <laughs> all right, you can think about it. I really want to try to get NBA players in my fucking pot. Uh, yeah. Oh, man, I, sorry, Joey. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> at this point, this bet is part of my investment strategy. <laughs> Ay 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 Poppy. Ay 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 yeah, punting on these bets here. Uh okay. Four players left. And then after this drawing, the remaining two will be the final matchup just by process of elimination. So here we go. Okay. Next up is Darren Elias. Okay. Who will be pitted against our second qualifier. Who goes by Joey, what does that say? KK, KK1? KK and, uh, yeah, KK, KK1, correct, yep. And then uh, by default, the the final matchup will be Lucky Chewy versus Steven Chidwick. Okay, so wow. Chidwick versus Chewy will be will be quite a quite a match. Um, I would anticipate both those guys being sharp. I, Chidwick, you know, over the last, you know, I would say five years, Actually, let me even rephrase this. From like six years ago up until about three years ago, I think Chadwick really built up his name as one of the best players in tournaments. Um, one of the sharpest guys. I, I I don't know if he still plays a lot these days or not. So um, there's always a little bit of a caveat there. But a uh, very sharp guy. Very good. Chewy, uh, he's been pretty active, I think, in the uh, Las Vegas streets, some WSOP streets, maybe some live games, things like that. But um, I also know that he is, sharp, you know, pretty sharp with his study and research and when i was playing negrano he'd message me about some some things that he saw or thought so i would anticipate that being a pretty tough match for both of them should be a good one the other one's going to be a bit of a curveball obviously darren's going to be pretty good i don't know much about his heads up game um but uh he's going to be at least pretty good and then you know the qualifier is that's just i mean what, what can i say I, the guy's name's in chinese like what, what am i supposed to do <laughs> i don't even know what his name is Thomas, can I get the translation on that? Well, I'm not the one who uh, uh, promised to learn Mandarin in a year, so so really I have to defer to uh, to our co-host here. Very I've won. Point. I won a lot of bets, guys. Why are we talking about the bets I've won? Why are we talking about the bets that 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 the, the limited number I I am not winning? You know what I mean? Very very good point, Thomas. And and I do like that you've turned this around from getting made fun of for not having their names to making fun of Joey. <laughs> really, really a nice job there. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. Well, let's look at the bracket here, Doug. What uh, what matches uh, do you think could be the most entertaining here for the fans when you kind of look around and see? So I think uh, I think I think we have some kind of some some real themes that develop with each of these brackets. Top left bracket is uh, the the fun bracket. It's the a lot of casual players. Should be a good time. I imagine we'll see some hilarious hands. Uh, it, it, the overall the uh, vibe will be pretty casual. It'll be pretty laid back. I would expect to see uh, the winner of Greenwood, Rabichow, go far. And then I think, of course, Dan Smith in the top part of the bracket, or top part of that quadrant looks pretty strong as well. But a lot of ways this one could shake out. 
it is a heads up and go format. Blinds do go up pretty quick. Obviously, this can go a lot of directions, but the, the theme of this bracket is kind of fun, you know, fun, casual, let's see who makes it out of here kind of, kind of vibe. Bottom left is sort of the poker personalities bracket. Uh, you know, maybe the top left is real personalities. Top, the bottom left is poker personalities, which you know it's like C minus personalities at best. Uh, you know, me and Tom Dwan, I can't think of two people that are were bigger names that are more of has beens than we are now. Um, oh no, wait, no, Patrick Antonius is right below us. So we have those three, and then we also have uh, Brad Owen, obviously the biggest vlogger in the game, another personality. Uh, and then uh, I don't know much about uh, Gact. But he is, uh, you know, a music guy, right? So yeah, um, Japanese yeah. Go. A lot, a lot of personalities in the bottom left. So, so it should be a bit more competitive than top left. But um, you know, still not like maybe like the fiercest of the bunch. Top right is the, uh, is just basically the uh, bracket of death, group of death, if you will, where we're gonna see someone come out of that where it's just you know truly truly difficult to make it through and uh, kind of some 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 subplots there limitless and button clicker who played a lot of heads up poker against her last year they're they're in the same neck of the woods so that would be a very interesting round two match to see although i'm hoping that doesn't happen because i just bet my man nicky pete uh so that's that's definitely the tough bracket and the bottom right feels like it feels like kind of like the leftover bracket. Like we filled out all the other brackets of who we got left. Okay, we got a little bit of this. We got a little bit of that. We got some good online players. We got uh, an influencer over here. We've got uh, one of the you know most famous poker players of all time. We've got a Chinese guy that uh, Joey can't pronounce his name because he doesn't know Chinese, and and Thomas <laughs> didn't prepare that for us. We got a little bit of everything kind of going on in the bottom right bracket. So. Should be a fun one. It's definitely some some cool themes sort of seeing a play. Joey, what are you most looking forward to here? What what matches? What storylines? What themes are are kind of jumping out at you? Well, I'm very excited to uh, to see my girl Alexandra Botez in the mix. So that's going to be the match I got my eye on. Alexandra Botez versus Hafu. And uh, yeah, running through this, I don't, I'm excited to see Steve Aoki play Dan Smith. I feel like there's going to be some entertaining uh, banter there. Jean Robert Belland and Lynn. I know those two are going to be talking shit to each other. So that one's going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, uh, my eyes on uh, Tom Dwan versus Doug Polk. That's definitely going to be the one I'm tuning in for and want to see. I'll be interested to see how Brad Owen does. I know he's going to have a lot of fans out there supporting him. And uh, yeah, what you said, right, about Nick Shulman versus Chris Kruk. Excited to see those two play as well. Olivier, just excited to see Olivier again. I haven't seen him in a while personally. So I'm, uh, I'm excited to kind of see him down in Mexico. Phil Ivey, of course, in the mix. That bottom right bracket. Yeah, I see what you said, kind of the, the leftovers and... Uh, yeah, I think we're going to see some surprises from some of these players. Maybe we see an online qualifier make it pretty far. I feel like this guy shipped her. I, I, something about this guy, uh, you know, maybe this guy might surprise us as well, too. So, but yeah, kind of looking for some matchups down the road here. I think that Doug Polk versus uh, Patrick Antonius could make for a pretty fun second round match. I think Doug Polk versus Brad Owen would make for an incredible third round match. And then uh, and then Doug Polk versus uh, Jean Robert Belland for the finale, I think, would be another great match as well, too. So, I'm uh, I'm hoping for those things. I hope we get to see it. I just know Doug will talk at the table, which uh, you know, which I think a lot of the fans want to see. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for here. No, I'm gonna have to agree with you. I'm looking forward to seeing me in the late rounds as well. Uh, so you know, we're both on the same page there. I think low key, lucky, chewy, Stephen Chigwick. Yeah, it's a great one. I think low key, the stakes are really high there. I could see either one of those players. Making it all the all the way to the final four, um, you know, so, somewhat easily in, in this lineup. So I think like that one uh, stakes are kind of high there. Uh, obviously, we talked about Greenwood Rabichow earlier. I think that match is, is really going to set a tone there too. Set the tone there too. And then I I, I think um, Stefan Timothy Adams, another one of those ones in the first round that really jumps out at you. Like the winner of this could 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 really go the distance. Um, top top right, it's kind of hard to say any individual match could could put people too far. I mean, you know, I'm I may, maybe there, there's no you know all those matches are good. I think uh, especially especially Linus Bousquet and uh, Limitless Nikki P. Those those are going to be ones to to watch for sure. But then you're going to have tough rounds anyway. So yeah. um, I think I think those are really the the ones to watch in terms of like just overall play level. In terms of just, just entertainment value, I, I think I think. You know, I hate to, to toot my own horn here, Joey, but I, I have to say, I think me versus Tom Dwan, I think that might might be the most entertaining thing we got lined up here in round one. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think so too. You mentioned Lucky Chewy, Stephen Chidwick. Uh, Chewy, one of the hardest workers that I know in terms of uh, working on his game and putting in volume. So I think he's going to be, uh, you know, they're going to take that very seriously. Lucky Chewy versus Stephen Chidwick. Those guys are both uh, very prideful in their own games. And you mentioned uh, their second round opponent. I think Darren Elias, once again, another great player as well. Plays all the time, battles all the time. Just got to see him down in Texas as well too. Spend a little time with him. So uh, look, hope, looking forward to seeing how he does. And uh, And yeah, I guess format, you know, we got to figure out how much, uh, you know, what this format, what that's going to look like realistically, how much variance that's going to add to the actual matches themselves. You know, maybe it, it adds so much variance, like it, it, none of this stuff matters and we're just kind of talking for, for no reason. So uh, hopefully we get that format figured out. It's going to be live starting June 18th on World Poker Tour Twitch and their YouTube channel. I'll be tweeting out uh, updates on my Instagram and on my Twitter. And uh, I know that Doug will be posting some stuff as well. Other players are hopefully post up as well too. And then Thomas, uh, what time is that? Is this going to start on June 18th and June 19th? And then, uh, yeah, w w what's more information on where these guys can watch that event at? Uh, these are going to be kicking off every day at 1 p.m. Pacific time, PST. Okay. And uh, there will be a pregame show before each day starts. Um, so you can tune in at around 12, 1230 Pacific for each day. Oh, okay. Are, are any matches going to run concurrently, Thomas? Yes. So the way this is going to work, is you can see on the bracket here, uh, the first round is being held on the 18th and the 19th. So each day, uh, there will be eight matches. And each ma uh, there will be two matches running concurrently in four different time slots. So at 1 p.m. PST, there will be two matches. It will be a featured match and a secondary match. And then there will be another pair of matches at 3, another pair at 5, and then finally another pair at seven and that'll be the case for both the 18th the 19th and the 20th because the second round will also just be eight matches uh then on the 21st uh what we're going to do is we are going to play uh the final eight and the final four so both of those rounds will because that's six matches total so both of those uh will get done in one day and then finally the finals uh, the final two players will battle in a best of five on the 22nd. And that will also kick off at 1 p.m. All right. It'd be fun to run deep in this. Hell yeah. That's going to be, if you run deep, everyone's going to be hyped up about that. I mean, that's, I, th I feel like this is going to be a pretty popular event. I think a lot of people are going to be, be watching it and paying attention to it. So I think, of... I think, I think there's a lot of people that would be pretty hype if they ran deep. Are we using the word hype now? How old are we? Um, it's allowed. I'll allow it. And yeah, okay. the, the, the prize, the payout is, uh, I, I, you could say it's top heavy. Uh, it's 400k to first, 200k to second, and then uh, 100k to the third and fourth place finishers. Yeah, half, half the pool is a, a pretty solid payout. You, you got some uh, you got some last longers in there too. So it is going to be 20k to the influencer that makes it the deepest. And the three that we're counting as in that category are Hafu, Alexandra Botez, and Shifter. And one thing that I may not have mentioned uh, is that their coaches will also win 20K if their student uh, makes it the deepest. And the coaches eligible for that will be Olivier Bousquet, Darren Elias, and uh, Dan Smith. You know, Thomas, originally, wasn't I going to be a coach? You are. You are. Yes. But uh, I, guess, I guess you faded that one, Doug, and ended up with one of the non-influencer students. So, oh, Doug's I don't. Not eligible for the bonus? No, Doug's not eligible for the uh, the last long wow. bonus. Nor, wow. Nor nor is Brad Owen because Brad Owen's a poker. Pl you know what I mean? Like we I we we wanted some of the uh, the Twitch streamers that are not professionals to to have a chance to uh, to not just walk away empty handed. Er. Damn. But that's mean. That's mean to Doug. Yeah, that's that's all right. Just right. the 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 beats keep on keep on hitting this year you know brutal meanwhile dan smith just keeps running pure in the top left bracket and <laughs> well i guess that's where we got anything else uh we got a couple here thomas or is that is that we got we got the main details we got when we're gonna play people keep asking if they're live or online the matches will be online on poker king correct thomas yes the mat the matches will be played through the poker king app uh, many, most of the players, in fact, will be in Cabo playing this. So effectively, they will be in the same room. It'll be kind of, it might, we might do it battleship style. Oh, that would be, Jesus. that would be something. Are you looking forward to your battleship match against Tom? 
Uh, uh, you know, you know, Thomas. I'm one of those guys. I, I want to go out there and hunt my prey and, and firsthand. You know, see it die. So yeah, yeah I'm I'm good with the battleship. You know, so. Sometimes you just gotta look a man in the eye and uh, mm -hmm. you know, see what he's got, see what he's made of. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Should be a fun time, guys. Please tune in <laughs> on on W World Poker Tour on Twitch and on YouTube. Uh, and this is the bracket. Thanks, guys, for joining us. <laughs> Thomas, that that ending. All right, all right. You know what? And, and, let, Joey... and yeah, and yeah. This, <laughs> this is the bracket. So I guess we're done here. Let me let me let me leave this to the professionals then, Joey. Please, uh, please uh, walk us out. Up, right? Listen, you don't want to miss it. It's gonna be June 18th. Doug Polk, Tom Dwan. You at least gotta tune in for that matchup, right? It's gonna be a great event. First uh, first time we're kind of trying this as well too. First time Thomas is uh, you know, trying this out. So I expect to see more events in the future, more different formats, and uh, we'll take the good, we'll take the bad, we'll figure out what worked, what didn't work, and uh, no matter how this event turns out, uh, I think it'll be turned out great that we get some great content out of it, and in the future you'll see more. So I'm personally very excited for it. I'm excited to see a lot of these matchups, to see, to get back to more live poker, right? More people interacting in real life. Everyone was locked down for a long time. Poker in America's popping. The World Series of Poker's coming up. Later this year, everyone's really hyped up for that. Vegas is out of control right now. The tournaments are going crazy. The cash game lists are too fucking long. And uh, yeah, it kind of feels like poker's going back a little bit. So I'm excited. Doug Polk's playing on poker live streams again. I, I randomly went on YouTube and I saw Doug Polk's playing at a card room down there. So you know things are going well if Doug Polk's making his return back to poker. So uh, so yeah, I'm excited. Also, I know the fans want to see Doug, you know, Doug retired after the Dan Negreanu channel. I don't think he, he actually didn't say he was retired. He said that he doesn't want to announce his retirement just because he wants to come back sometimes and doesn't want to get shit from people about how he said he was going to retire again. I'm pretty sure that's what he said during the last pod we did. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to be happy to see Doug play as well. And uh, that's what I got, Doug. You take it home, buddy. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in today for this bracket reveal. All in all, I think that we have some fun matches to look forward to, and we hope to see you guys tune in soon for this. It's going to be happening in three days. The 17th should be the first round. Sorry, the eight, sorry, four days. The 18th should be the first round matchups. A lot to see here. Plenty of people to root for. I think if you enjoy poker, you enjoy poker personalities, you're going to find some people in here you want to root for. Or maybe you just enjoy watching the ant antics and pain and suffering of the people that lose. Either way, should be a fun one, and we hope to see you guys there soon. Peace. Peace.